click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in the previous topic we have discussed about the glycosidic linkage and now in this topic we are going to talk about the structure of sucrose. So now let us understand that how we can draw the structure of sucrose and what are the information related to the structure of sucrose. This is what I am going to talk about in this topic. So now let's get started. So friends, we do understand that is the sucrose is nothing but it is a disaccharide and on hydrolysis it will give us that is D-glucose as well as D-fructose. But the glucose that is what we could get is a dextroglucose and the fructose that is what we could get is basically a levo fructose. So based on that let us understand that is what is the structure of sucrose and the structure of sucrose is what I'm going to talk about. That is it is a combination of the alpha D glucopyranose with the beta D fructofuranose. So based on that, let me give you the structure for that one. Suppose if we are talking about the alpha D glucopyranose, and in that case we have that is the pyranose structure. That is what I am writing over here. And obviously this is the first carbon atom, and in that case we see it is also known as the anomeric carbon atom, and because of which we could decide whether the glucose is basically alpha glucose or whether glucose is beta D glucopyranose. So let me talk about this later but now let me talk about the second, third, fourth, fifth carbon atom. So in this case we see to the fifth carbon atom there is an attachment of CH2OH and on the lower side there is hydrogen that is attached to it. And talking about this carbon atom, this carbon atom consists of OH over here, a hydrogen atom attached to it and to that that is I am talking about the third carbon atom. So the third carbon atom consists of the OH which is present on the upper side while the hydrogen is present on the lower side. And in that case if we talk about the fourth carbon atom, so there is a presence of OH group on the downward side and H on the upper side. So therefore this is nothing but the alpha glucopyrano structure but I am not confirming unless if I add a hydrogen on the first carbon atom. So suppose if this has to be a alpha D glucopyranose then here there should be an attachment of OH. But the thing is sucrose is a combination of alpha glucopyranose and the beta fructofuranose. In that case basically we could find a glycosidic linkage and the glycosidic linkage is what we have over here that is there will be a formation of a glycosidic linkage between the alpha D glucopyranose with the fructofuranose. So for that we have to consider that is beta fructofuranose in that case we understood that is for beta fructofuranose there is a presence of OH on the upper side on the anomeric carbon atom. So in that case suppose if I draw the structure of beta fructofuranose so in that case we will get to know about the structure of beta fructofuranose as this one. But for the beta fructofuranose this is nothing but the carbon number 2 and to which basically the carbon number 1 that is attached so here I am drawing that is CH2OH. And here there is a presence of OH and then only it will be called as that is beta fructofuranose. So therefore this is the oxygen atom of the beta fructofuranose. So this is what we have over here and now let us understand that is this is the first carbon atom, this is the second carbon atom, this is the third carbon atom of the beta fructofuranose and to which basically OH is attached over here, H is attached over here, to which the H is attached over here, OH is attached over here. And here there is a presence of H and here we could find that is CH2OH. So this is how basically the both are linked with each other through a glycosidic linkage. And that is the definition that is what we have understood in the previous one that is one of the anomeric that is carbon atom it will form the bond with the other carbon atom through the oxygen bond and this is known as the glycosidic linkage. So now let me talk about the further part that is this is what we have that is a structure of sucrose and this is basically plus sucrose. That means this is a dextro rotatory sucrose that is what we are talking about. But whenever this sucrose is basically hydrolyzed this sucrose will hydrolyzed into two components that is the plus D glucopyranose and minus D glucopyranose and even the both are basically of the D form. But the overall mixture that is what we could get that is a combination of or the equimolar combination of the D plus glucopyranose and that is D minus fructofuranose this will result in a formation of a mixture 
where the mixture it would be of levorotatory and in that case because let me give you a certain idea that is whenever the sucrose is getting hydrolyzed so therefore we'll get two kind of mixture so therefore the product that is what we could get is d plus glucopyranose or glucose if what we could say and the other mixture that is what we could get is d minus fructofuranose or fructose but the levo rotation of the fructofuranose is found to be that is minus 92.4 which is more than compared to that of the dextro rotation which is basically 52.5 so this indicates that is the fructofuranose is rotating more compared to that of the glucose and that's the reason the mixture that is what we could get after the hydrolysis of the sucrose it will be of levorotatory and that's the reason that is the sugar that is what we have obtained that are known as invert sugars so therefore this was nothing but the structure of sucrose as well as the few related information related to it and that's it so thank you friends for watching this video i hope i'll see you next time till then don't forget to subscribe me to the channel thank you so much